Lady from Michigan, Mrs. Talib is recognized for five minutes. Thank you so much, Chairwoman Maloney, for your courageous stance and also using the House Oversight Committee to take a deeper dive into the impact of what happened in Texas uh, there as well as across the country. You know, I, I grew up in the most beautiful blackest city in the country, where 85 percent of the city of Detroit is black, and it's beautiful, and black mothers are the ones who told my mother to raise her voice when she had that heavy immigrant like accent at parent meetings. And you know, I'm sitting there listening to people pretending, disingenuously, honestly, that they actually care about the lives of my black neighbors. I always get emotional about this because I cannot believe that my colleagues who didn't even vote for the George Floyd Justice for Policing Act are talking about the fact that Planned Parenthood, which I believe is literally one of the only healthcare places and institutions like cities like mine. The fact that we have some of the worst infant mortality rates in the country among black children. We can't even get them to one years old. It's like, why aren't we spending the same energy, doctor? in saving those lives, getting them to one year. How come when I was in the Michigan legislature, they spent so much time on this that they never wanted to talk about that single mother that we needed to make sure that she had the wraparound services, that she could actually provide for her family because she made a choice. But we abandon those mothers every corner. We vilify and dehumanize. I've watched them force mothers to do drug testing before they could even get any assistance. When, when are we gonna actually call this out for what it is? No, this is about controlling women in our country, period. Stop pretending it's anything but. You know, what's so distressful about all of this is the fact that it's not just Texas, Chairwoman, you know this. This is, gonna ha this is literally opening the floodgates to the possibility that we are actually going to see our country punish and criminalize abortion, criminalize women making a very difficult decision. I want to know, you know, Dr. Scott, like honestly, what are you doing about infant mortality rate among black children? Have you testified in a committee about it? Thank, thank you for your question. I'm very interested in the topic. I have applied to be a member of the Texas um, maternal Morbidity and Mortality Committee three times. I have not been accepted. Mm -hmm. I suspect it may be because of my stance on life. Mm -hmm. But I am I'm terribly concerned by the lack of support that so many of those women have. Yeah, well, the same people that voted for the bill that you are championing today are people that would actually leave them completely homeless and with no safeguards at all. I want you to believe me when I say that to you. Because Black Lives Matter should be very much at the forefront in every policy that we ever do in this country. It can't just be you carrying a sign or being on a commission. It's actually standing up and saying what we see. Because I want to tell you something. You know, over 40% of the deaths of COVID in my state are my black neighbors. Mm. Even though they make up less than 14% of the total population of Michigan. Because of environmental racism, because they don't have access to health care, and you're all punishing Planned Parenthood, which is literally sometimes the only option that they have. Because people are investing and in saying, this is, this is how we can get access to health care. And I, and I am really just incredibly frustrated of the gaslighting, the misleading, and trying to say you're speaking on behalf of my black neighbors. You're not. You're not. And so I'm going to leave with Ms. Ross. I saw your face and the pain in your face. And I just have to tell you, you know, as you were listening to them, I could see you had a lot to say, and I'm gonna leave you with the last minute to, to tell me how you felt when you heard them talk about, oh, this is, this is killing black folks. Tell them what is really killing, killing black folks in this country. Go ahead and tell them the truth. Well, I'm tired of white saviors saying that black women aren't smart enough to make our own decisions about our lives. That's what I'm tired of. That is the ultimate in racism to accuse us of being less smart, less human, and less caring about our children than you do. When your actions speak louder than your mealy words, because you vote against ch children having lunches, getting good schools, getting rid of guns so that they can survive. You vote against everything about our children once they're here, and yet you want to say that you're a better savior of Black children than we are? 
get over yourself that this white saviorism does not convince us that you have our interests at heart. I hope you heard her because, you know, a mentor of mine told me when I got here, some people are never going to hear or see you the same way I do, Rashida. But I hope you saw Miss Ross and you felt what she's saying because it is the truth. You want to save lives? Start investing in tearing down structural racism in our country. Gentlelady Beals back. Uh, the gentleman order. from Texas, uh, excuse me, the gentleman from Kansas, Mr. LaTurner. Uh, well, Madam Chair, is point, recognized of order, for five point of order. Point of order from the ranking member, point of order. Okay. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Chair. What's your point of order? I've never seen a, a hearing where a witness has been badgered and treated the way that our witness has been treated today. And I would like to encourage your members to uh, treat this witness with respect. I can't believe I'm having to say this in Congress. We, we get, we, we are very frustrated at 99% of your witnesses over this Congress, but we treat them with respect. So all I ask is that the Democrats treat our witness with respect. She is answering the questions. She is doing a tremendous job handling herself well, and I don't think she deserves mm -hmm. to be treated the way that she's been treated by your side. I yield back. Well, I, I know that members have very strong feelings about this issue, but I would encourage members to treat everyone in this hearing, uh, members and, and witnesses, uh, uh, with, with respect. And with that, can we continue with our hearing?